Master locks. Number one thing that people are using to bust people upside the head with in prison. Hold down, man. Suitcase this. My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp. You get it knocked off or missing, you gonna get it. Next time I see you, you gonna leave airlifted. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of K-Fraud TV. Y'all go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Today's topic, I'm gonna be speaking on, you know, how it feels, you know, getting hit with a lock. The damage that you can, you know, actually do with a lock. Down here in the state of Florida, the actual lock that we have is a standard combination master lock, like this one right here. This is the same exact one that you get in Florida State Prison. They cost $6, okay? Now, when it comes to these locks right here, a lot of main camps, when you order it on the canteen list, they do not give it to you that day. If you go to the canteen one and you order a lock, they're going to give you your receipt and then you will be on the call out the property. Same place you go when you have a book coming through the mail or anything like that. And then as long as you have your receipt presented, they will give you your lock. As far as like majority of the reception centers, like South Florida Reception Center to the canteen window and you purchase a lock, they're going to give you your lock right then and there. A lock is one of the first things that I purchased when I first landed in the state of Florida prison. When I first hit the canteen window for my first time, I spent like a good $25, $30 or something like that. But I purchased me a lock. You could be at South Florida and get in an argument with someone. And then next thing you know, you can go to the window and be like, man, all right. Go to the window and be like, man, let me let me get three uh, master locks, such and such, such and such, such. And purchase these locks straight from them and give one to him, him. And you keep one and all three, y'all go fire someone up. That's what they call it when you hit someone with a lock. It's called being fired up. Now, me personally, I never got hit in the face with a lock. I never got hit in the head with a lock, but I got my elbow busted open, all right? Because I got in an argument with someone. It was over, it was over a couple packs of cigarettes. And, um, you know, he wanted me to, like, go down on the price at the time. It wasn't to where I could go down on the price because then I was basically hustling for nothing. So we got in an argument. It went to puss ass crackers, what he went to saying. I went to calling him a fuck nigga, you know, shit like Long that. Long story short, he tried to fire me up. When he tried to fire me up, I was walking outside my dorm, which was a blind spot. You know, there's no, there's no cameras or nothing like that. When I walked along the side of my dorm, he came around the corner and he tried to, he tried to hit me across the face with it. So I weaved and then he swung again. And I, when I dropped like to duck, he came up this way with it now. And it busted my elbow. When it busted my elbow, I didn't know it at the time. It just felt like it, it went numb instantly. You know what I'm saying? And then um, my homeboy I was with ran after him. So when my homeboy ran after him when I weaved, I started running after him. We tripped him. We got him on the ground. And then my homeboy didn't even do nothing. He just let me get it to him. So I started whooping his ass on the side of our dorm. You feel me? I didn't get in trouble. The one who tried to fire me up with a lot, he didn't get in trouble. But he was forced to check in. He wasn't coming to sleep in the dorm, you feel me? Because in Florida, nine times out of ten, you get in a, you know, a situation with someone that's in your dorm. Both of y'all ain't sleeping in there tonight. One of y'all got to go. He ended up checking in or whatnot. But I tell you what, my elbow was so swollen and that motherfucker was sore for like two and a half weeks. Like he literally like fucked my elbow up at the time. These things right here can do damage, all right? You get hit across the head, split, gushing, split, gushing. Like I've seen people get patched up. It's where they leave patches in where your hair is at. It leaves different patch marks, these different, you know, they're going to heal the scars. So you're going gonna to tell that boy been patched up. You feel me? So the thing about these, though, is to me, you got one good swing. That's how I look at it, because once you swing, you miss. If that person gets up on you and starts beating your ass, they ain't going to really feel this. They're going to feel it afterwards. I done seen people hit someone so hard that the, 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 the knob comes off. You know, we don't put them in, in socks, like how, they, how people say, oh, a lock in a sock. That's just the saying for it. But we don't actually put them in socks. You can put them in socks. You just tie a knot. You get you a long, like a tube sock. You know what I'm saying? And you and you put the, the put the lock in there and tie it to where the the lock can't go nowhere. The knot will be right above 
so it can't slide. Because if you have it too long, when you swing and when you hit, it's going to bust the end of the sock and your lock's going to fly out of the sock. It's going to put a hole straight through it, you know. So we don't really go for socks, even though it's called, you know, a lock and a sock. We actually use the canteen bags. You know, the, the the net bag, it looks like a basketball net. You tie that on there real good and tight, and then you have your lock. That lock ain't coming off there. Or your belt for the blues that they used to issue. They used to issue the blues that look like a pair of Dickies that came with, like, the military belt with the little clasp right here. Caught what it made, it's considered a weapon, you know? So every dorm I was in, we always had a dummy lock. We call them a dummy lock. And the dummy lock... They actually, you know, you don't know the combination to them or anything like that, but it just sits in your locker. You know, to the officers, it looks like you have an extra lock, but really it's a dummy lock. So I ain't got to take my actual locker off my lock. I mean, my lock off my locker and come pat your ass up. I could just grab a dummy locker, you know, and, and tie that bitch to it. And it's kind of like a throwaway. You don't care what happens with it, you know, because like I said, if you got to use your lock off your locker, and then you need one, say you go to confinement, or if you don't, if you need one, you're going to have to wait like 30 days in order to go pick it up. You feel me? So you always have a dummy lock that you can use to patch someone up. I've seen people get their shit split wide open with these locks. You feel me? Like, i seen people get their whole nose, their whole nose was sideways, like from, from running into it. You feel me? But... One good swing is all I feel like the person swinging these hats. I'll run up on someone that's swinging a lock at me. You know, that's that's just how I am. Like, a lock isn't really that much of a threat. Like I said, when it hits you, it feels numb. It's like a numb patch. You ain't gonna feel it until after the fight, till your adrenaline goes down. You feel me? So, like, someone can have a lock or whatever, and, like, of course, I'll be like, man, fuck, nigga, you know, like, like, you know, and try to get up on them. You try to get closer to them because they can't really get that much of a swing when you're up on them. You feel me? From a distance, they can do damage and bash you open. So I did a video on these before, you know, about breaking into the locks. You know, how we get these broken into and you use a you use a piece of a, a Coca-Cola can. To, that's how you, you, you drop it down in the here. You cut your little piece, you drop it down in the here and you hit it. And then when you yank, it, it, it unlocks the lock about, you know, that's how you pick a lock off someone's locker if you want to break into their locker. Or you could just pick a, another locker up because some dorms have it to where they're not bolted to the ground. It depends on what ratchet camp you're at, you, it, uh, depending on how many will be bolted and how many won't. Like when I was at Calhoun, there was all, you know, drawers. They were drawers that were under your bunk. There was two under the bottom bunk, two under the top bunk. So when you're laying on the bottom bunk... The person above you's drawers are above your head. So anytime they want to open their drawer, their drawers right there, you know, it'll wake you up. They can't get in their drawers without waking you up. You feel me? So, and then under theirs is the drawers. But at the work camp they had, which I went to for five days, all the all their lockers were perfectly nice lockers that were, you know, they weren't bolted. You, you actually had to pick them up every day and put them on the end of your bunk. They didn't want nothing on the floor. Charlotte, none of them were bolted. You know what I'm saying? And I said this before in one of my videos. When I was in E-Dorm, a two-man cell, I actually went to D-Dorm, the open bay dorm, the only open bay at Charlotte, and actually took a locker because I didn't have one in E-Dorm in my room when I got out of confinement. I went to D-Dorm, grabbed a locker, and walked to E-Dorm with it. Like, literally, was the only person on the compound that had that happen. That literally had someone carry a locker from D-Dorm to E-Dorm. You feel me? But you could pick one of those up, and you can set it in an angle like this on the lock you set it in an angle on the lock and then you jump on it you'll hear a big bow but it and then you'll hear bling, 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 from this thing coming off and everything so people bust locks you know normally people will do shit like that if you know like if they if they know that person went to confinement and they want to get into it before the officers do because the officers are going to come in there with a piece of paper and they're going to walk to the bunk of someone who went to confinement this is their bunk bag all their stuff up Put it in a big bag with their mugshot picture, tie it, and they send it back to the property. So people tend to bust the locks first so they could take what they want out of it and shit like that and then walk away. The officers don't know if there was a lock or not, even though a lot of times at some camps, they'll give the officer their combination key. Like when I was at Charlotte, when you go to confinement, they'll come there and ask you, you got a lock on your, on your locker? And if you're like, yeah. They'll be like, what's your combination? And they'll write it down. So then they send it to the officer. And then the officer in the dorm will actually put your combination in 
to unlock your lock and shit like that. They didn't have the keys like they did at Calhoun. You feel me? That's another way. Or at Calhoun, you could take the drawer out and put the drawer on there and jump on it too and it'll bust. You feel me? But you hear a loud, a loud bang noise. But that's how people break into your lock. Now, this right here is the number one considered weapon though. You feel me? At mo at, this is a common weapon. This will be at every institution. It doesn't matter if there is no knives on the compound. It doesn't matter if there's no razors on the compound or anything. This is always there because this is what is issued. You feel me? This is what is needed in order to stop extortion and stuff like that. You feel me? So if you ever come across getting into it with someone with these, just know you always have one. You always have five. You always have... You know, it ain't like you can go to prison and you're going to be unarmed. There's nothing you can do. You will always have five. This is your weapon. You feel me? But to me, it ain't nothing like getting cut. You feel me? This right here is 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 bullshit when it comes to being cut, whether it's by a razor blade or, or part of a razor off of a fence. You know, like this right here. This is what the fencing is. This is actual prison fencing razor right here. Okay. These right here, these came off of a fence in prison. You feel me? So like that right there, someone could break that off right there and use that right there and cut you, you know, dice you all up. You feel me? But that's what prison wire looks like right there. You see? So you got to think about it. Would you rather get hit by this or would you rather get cut by that? All right? You feel me? So the cutting, you know, of course, it's worse than this. But to me, getting poked up and wet up is worse than being cut. You know, you could die from being poked up. You're not going to die from being cut. But who wants to be cut in the face? You see what I'm saying? So the lock, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, knock on wood. If you ever, ever have to go, just remember, you always have five. They're easy to come across. They're easy to get your hands on. And like I said, I've seen plenty of people get patched up with these things. They use a majority at JIT camps. At the JIT camps, you know, they'll they'll fire you up with a lock, you know, quicker than they will go get a banger and come hit you up with a banger. Locks is what they're playing with majority, you know, at JIT camps. But it does go down on a day-to-day -day basis in adult camps. Someone may feel like, you know, that person might whoop them or that or they feel like they can't beat that person. So they're like, man, you know what? I got something for them. I'm going to patch his ass up with a lock. You know, it gives them the kind of, you know, an upper hand. Or some people might just want to do it to them that bad that they're like, man, fuck, whooping them with these. I'm going to go ahead and make me a, I'm going to make me a, uh, I'm going I'm to tie this shit up real quick and I'm going to go patch boy. You feel me? But like I said, one good swing is all they really do with this. Now, if you get jumped by three, four different people and the two of them have one of these, you're going to get some damage done to you because then they're just going to sit there and ride you. Pat, 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 pat. Just keep, just keep riding you to where they ain't got to go way back here to hit you. You feel me? When it's just you and one person, they going to go way back here and try to take your head off with it. So it gives you the upper hand if you weave it to run up on them and start whooping them. And then eventually they're going to drop the lock. They're going to drop it and try to, you know, fight with you. You feel me? Unless they got their arm in the, in the, the, the handle of the canteen bag, then that, that, that shit ain't dropping. You know, then they, they have it. It's it's on there. They're not dropping it. It's going to be there for the whole fight. Or if they got shoestrings and it's wrapped to where it's on their hand the whole fight. But after a while, if you're fighting someone and you got a lock, you know, and it's tied and it's and it's to where you always have it. But then they're whooping you because y'all are up close and you can't swing that. You're going to eventually let the lock go and try to defend yourself with your hands. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, just remember... One good swing. That's it. So if you really want to patch someone up, you know, just run up and... I've seen these shits get dented on the side. Like a whole dent sideways like this. Like flattened. Split buddy shit open. And, you know, they don't really feel it. But then they'll notice they're bleeding. They'll get missing. They'll go check in. They'll get up out of there. You know what I'm saying? Like 50 Cent said in his old song. I see gangsters get religious when they start bleeding. You feel me? That's, that's what happens. They see that blood like, oh shit, I'm hit. They don't know if they were stabbed or if they was hit with a lock. You feel me? They just feel like you punched them in the head real hard. You know, but these things here, they do do damage though. You know, and thank God I ain't ever got hit in the face with one of them. The worst was mine was the elbow. But I ain't gonna lie, I feel like the elbow was worse than the head. 
because the head, you know, that's a common place to get hit. So like it would have, it would have healed. It would have been sore in a little spot or whatever. But my elbow, man, I couldn't even go like this with my arm, bro, for almost a month. Like literally, bro, that shit hurt so bad. It was like swollen and purple. You know, they, they, that shit, that shit'll fuck you up. And it didn't break. The lock didn't break. You feel me? You can use that shit again. You'll get ones that got dents all in them and shit as a throwaway, flat looking. Like you could tell, oh, this shit's been used on someone already. You know what I'm saying? But to answer the question, does it hurt getting hit with a lock? Yeah, it does. It does hurt. And it, that's what it's meant for. Of course it hurts. It's a piece of metal. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's not really, it's not, look. Look at that. See, look. Just to show y'all, like, I'm a hard head. You see? So like, it, it, it does or whatever. But that knob, boy. That knob, fuck around, that knob will hurt. Or the side of it, you see what I'm saying? But that's all I got to say, man. Master locks. Number one thing that people are using to bust people upside the head with in prison. You feel me? But anyways, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Y'all tune in to the next video, man. You already know this frog.